these were once the most desirable cars on the planet. Today, they're rotting away in barns, fields, and garages, unloved, unwanted, and undriven until now. Two expert car mechanics have come together to seek out rust buckets from all over the world. We've got cars just left to rot. What a waste. Wow, a Lotus right out of James Bond. And transform them into sexy and saleable objects of desire. They're on a tight budget. You paid 12 grand? I had to pay. Mario couldn't have gone down anymore. And an even tighter schedule. When they're done, an independent appraiser reveals whether they've made money or lost thousands. Bernie Feynman is a Cockney car legend. Hey, hit it, my son, hit it. Hey. A master mechanic, he's passionate about classic cars. The old classic cars were a thing of beauty. The people that used to build those cars were absolute craftsmen. The way those cars were built with love, with care, with engineering, which we've lost today. Over four decades, he's restored hundreds of them. This looks beautiful. Mario Passioni is a canny Canadian auto dealer. What do you want for this? Six and a half. I'm sorry? Who's made a name buying and selling historic cars. Unbelievable class. What year is this? It's more than just a business for me. It's a passion. When I was a kid growing up, I used to see them drive by. And I was just like five years old, and I just said, one day I'm going to have that car. Now, these old pals are starting their first venture together to rescue and restore some of the world's most important classics. Well, it's pretty good for an old car. It goes well for an old foul like me. Yeah. <laughs> when did you learn to drive? Ah! You got it in the right gear, man. Why well, don't criticize me? You want me to drive it? Mario, I want to get there in one piece. I don't believe you ever even wrote a test. You gave the horse an apple and then you were on your way. <laughs> <laughs> you like that. <laughs> we going? Get the music. Let's go. Let's hop a line. I'm hungry. But you're going to die. I don't know be angry. Time to decide what their first car should be. Who's your mate? Okay. Who's your mate? That's Mario. That's Charlie. Hi, Charlie. Hey, how are you? Right. Take a seat. Thank you very much, Charlie. On the plane, I had this great idea of the car we should do. What sort of car is that? An Alfa Romeo Spider. Absolutely fantastic European, Italian, and a great car. Well, I've been also having a thought as well. I was thinking classic British engineering. Beast your eyes on. That E-type Jaguar. That's fantastic. That'd be a beautiful car to do. With the wire wheels. Look at the lines on nice the car. chrome. What do you think it's gonna cost to buy one? I would say about 10 grand. That's right. our budget. We shouldn't spend more than 10. Because then we gotta do restoration, a whole bunch of work to get it done. Well, we gotta start looking. I like this car. I agree. This is the car we're gonna do. Well, should we celebrate with a cup of tea? Yeah. Charlie, can I have two cups of Rosie? Yeah, here's one. Rosie Lee is tea. Charlie, can I have a cup of Rosie, please? Black. The car they've set their hearts on has come to define the concept of motoring chic. Even Enzo Ferrari had to admit, it's the most beautiful car in the world. When it was launched in 1961, it was perhaps the most technologically advanced car of its age. Fully restored E-types vary in price, but on average, a good one could sell for $35,000 to $50,000. Mario and Bernie have set themselves a budget of just 10,000 pounds, which is around $15,500. And since it could cost the same again to restore the car, they'll have to stick to that figure. Nice old place. Wow, Mario, look. Oh, old MGB. Old, 
MGA 1600. Rolls Royce, blimey. Lying in a wet field 100 kilometers from Cambridge is an old E type that just might be the one. Yeah, look, 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 look. Hey. I think mean, that's our E type. Yeah. Looks like it. What's his name? Jim. Hi, Jim. Hello. Oh, it's Bernie, yeah? Yeah, that's right. Nice, nice to meet to you. Meet you. That's my unfortunate partner, Mario. <laughs> Hi, Mario. How are you, Jim? Went around the corner, and there there was this nice Jag. Just exactly what we're looking for. The exact color I wanted to buy. This E-Type spent most of its life in the California sun, so it should be relatively rust-free. If this was standing 15 years in the UK, all we'd have is a pile of rust. And it has a very desirable 4.2-liter engine. It could be a good bet. In good shape. Holy goodness. It's solid. It's a sand old car. Also as well. Yeah, it is, yeah. It's got power steering as well. Blimey. Air con. It's, it's what are you really asking for this, Jim? 14,500. 14.5. Yeah. What's that? Fully restored. <laughs> Superficially, this car looks great. But under the surface, there could be hidden, expensive problems. So when do you reckon the last time the car was started? Probably about 15 years ago. If they can get this cheap, it might be worth the risk. Are you open for any offers? If it was fairly reasonably close, yeah. We've got to look at it, what we've got to do on it, right? So the engine is probably seized or whatever. The body's going to have to be overhauled completely. All the rubbers, the screens, all the chrome. How about we have a starting price? Well, you can start. Seven and a half. Yeah, no. No, we are a huge way apart there, gentlemen. We are a huge way apart. How about 10 grand? We'll give you 10 grand today. I know you're trying. Cash. I know you're trying. But cash, Jim, yeah, as cash. it is. I'll go to 14, but, you know, I'm... I mean, I love the car, Jim, but I'll be honest with you. We can't go to 14, Mario. No. It just doesn't fit in our budget. So we're going to have to pass. OK, nice to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Thanks. The budget that they're on, they're not going to be buying a particularly good car, I don't think, and it will take a lot of restoring. I would love that car as well. Yeah, but it doesn't run. So why do people spend so much on E-types? It's not just its thrilling drive or head-turning looks that make it one of the most collectible of classic cars. Nostalgia plays its part. For many, it's come to embody the swinging 60s, a time of bold experiments in lifestyle and fashion. And then there's the sheer glamour. Sinatra bought one, Grace Kelly bought two, and Tony Curtis had one custom built just for him. For the cost of a new hatchback, you too can play at being a glamorous icon, if you can find an E-Type. Yeah, you've got an E-Type Jaguar for sale? My budget's about 10 grand. No, I ain't having a laugh, mate. My budget's about 10 grand. And for Bernie, that's proving harder than he expected. When you speak to people, try not to be so bloody rude. Uh, right. So you've sold the bonnet. It's in really, really bad condition, and you still want 22 grand. Eventually, someone succumbs to Bernie's charm. Lovely. All right, mate. No, I really appreciate it. Thanks very much for your help. I'll see you tomorrow. Lovely. Thanks. Bye. Car sounds very, very interesting. Only one problem we've got is asking too much for it. But he ain't met the geezer yet. But boom, 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 go over the car, give him his smile. Do a deal. I reckon we're going to get this one. So can Bernie talk this seller down? Morning, Rob. Hello. Yes. Hi, I'm Bernie. Bernie. Pleased to meet you. Hello. Hello. He looks just like the last guy. Are all E-type owners tall, thin men with grey hair? There she is. In all her glory. Could have washed the bloody thing. Was it in the state when you got it? It was probably worse than that. It doesn't look like much at first glance, but once he hears the roar of its mighty six-cylinder engine, that could change. Or perhaps not. That does not sound healthy. Hold your foot about a quarter of the way down the accelerator steady.
But the owner has a time-honored excuse. All Jags do that. No Jag ever sounded like that. There's definitely a whiff of BS in the air somewhere. In all the years in the trade, I've never ever seen a five-cylinder Jag. I didn't know they even made them. The engine's firing on five out of the six-cylinder. Someone's trying to hotwire the ignition from the coil backwards, and if that overheats, that'll catch fire. Hopefully, the body works in better shape. Did you do any of this? I've had a, I've had a bit of a touch on it, yeah. I'll polish it up, no. Polish? <laughs> it's an ordinary magnet, which is going to denote to me mm -hmm. what part's on there. That'll be metal, and particularly what parts are going to be fiberglass. That's got a lot of filler in there. Bernie's a car dealer. I expected him to find every fault and invent a few more. It's been repaired before, but not been done very, very well. Mm. We've got a nice big hole in the floor. Obviously, have a new floor panel put in. This E-Type has the desirable 4.2-litre engine, but a previous owner has put in an unoriginal sunroof. Bernie's keen to get it at a bargain price. I'm looking at about eight grand. Sorry? Eight. <laughs> Sorry. Not spending eight. I mean, look, I'm buying the car for eight. You didn't come all the way down here just to amuse me. Nine? I'll yeah. pay cash for it. Lowest I could possibly go is 12 and a half. That's it. Well, but I can't do 12 and a half. Come on. I'm not willing to accept anything less than 12 and a half. Come on, you can make it. Can you give me a few minutes? I want to phone my associate, my partner. Let's see what he says. Mario, morning, Bernie. Hey, what's up, old goat? I've been looking at this E-Type. He's asking 12 and a half grand. Then if you can get it under 10 grand, let's do the deal. I don't think he's going to take 10. This isn't the first time you bought a car. Negotiate a deal for 10 grand or under and call it a day. See what we can do. I'll let you know, all right? Call me later. You've been no bloody help. I've just spoke to my partner on the phone. He's just told me to go to 10. 12. Nah. That's the lowest I'm willing to go. I've come down an awful long way. 12? 12. I'm going to do it off my own head. You've got a deal. Thank you very much. Thank you Thank very you. much. Mario's arrived at the garage to see their new baby for the first time. Hey, Jeff. Hey, morning. I got to see what it looks like underneath. And it's love at first sight. I get really excited when I lift the top off the car. Oh, yeah. Looking from the rear end of the car, it's just a fantastic view. And I start seeing the beautiful curves in the car, because it's all about curves. Let's see if I can fit in it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is good. Morning, Mario. Hey, Bernie. You sure you can get out there okay? Or you want me to get you a crane or a shoe or something? So how are you how doing, people? buddy? I'm okay. <laughs> how are you doing? Not bad. Well, what do you think? I like it. I really like it. I get turned on when I see one of these cars. British engineering, through and through. Jaguar. Have a look. Boot door. Everything opens up beautifully. Look, what more do you want? In my experience with Bernie, when he's a little too chipper in the morning, he either had too much coffee or there's something he forgot to tell me. It's not bad. If you got it for what we discussed, under 10 grand, it's no problem. So, did you say under 10 grand? Under 10 grand. Well, did you get it for under 10 grand? My heart sunk, because I knew there was going to be problems. Well, I had to pay a bit more, to be honest. I mean, I couldn't get the guy down anymore. What really. did you pay for the car? And then he drops it on me. 12 grand. You paid 12 grand I for I had to pay. Mario, I couldn't have got him down anymore. I went off to sleep with a guy and take him out for dinner. I couldn't have got any less than that. You need a hearing aid? That extra 2000 he spent that would have been there to finish off some trim or get some piece we got to go on the other side of the country, it's not there. We're going to maybe break even. I'll tell you something, you're gambling, man? Yeah. I'll bet you one English pound we're going to double our money on this car. We'll see who loses. Right, shake on it. Yeah, done. Lovely. So what will it take to get a car like this to look more like this. To restore their E-Type properly, the guys will have to cut rust out, take paint off, and respray. 
put in a completely new interior and repair worn and broken parts. Either weld in metal or we get one of the pullback roofs, the original ones. I think we should check into the pullback roof. If we've got enough money to do that. The less they spend, the more money they'll make. They estimate their costs at just over $10,000. Since their biggest outlay is labor, they've decided to try and do it all in record time. Purists can take months to do a restoration. Mario and Bernie are giving themselves just four weeks. Three. Phone your mother, you ain't coming home for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and you ain't gonna have a shower. You feel tired? Sleep on the workshop floor. Or sleep in the four car. weeks, end the story. Four weeks is just 28 days to totally transform a 50-year-old car. But it's not Bernie or Mario who are going to be doing the hard grind. It's their team of mechanics. Have a good look around the car, guys. Who wants the good news and who wants the bad news? Yeah. We'll have the good news first. You want the good news that. first? Yeah. Want the good news first. They're used to working fast. You've got four weeks. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, oh, oh. But maybe not that fast. From now to get it no done. No way. Scrapper, if I can see through the floor, it's completely rusty. It's not that bad. Be positive, oh. When have you ever turned around and said to me, that can't be done? When things can't be done, we've done it. If we don't get it done in that time, we're not going to make any money. Get it up in the air, start stripping it. We're going to come back in two days and let's see what it's like. Let's see what let's you Let's get can it find. up. We've done it before. Let's go back. All right. Well, let's get cracking. Good Chris. joking, aren't they? The deadline's a deadline, so we try, but I can't see it. The mechanics have to decide what their first priorities are. It's had a little bit of love in its life, but not a lot. A bit like you, then. <laughs> yeah, yeah we've got half a chance, I think. There are plenty of parts that need replacing, from brake discs to shock absorbers. How are the brakes? No. All joints and discs. No good. <laughs> good old Bernie. And one of the biggest jobs of all will be the rear suspension. It may not look like much now, but in its day, this was pioneering. The E-Type's rear suspension evolved out of Jaguar Sports heritage. Its predecessor, the D-Type, was one of the most successful race cars of the 1950s. But then, Jaguar had what seemed at the time like a crazy idea. Bring race car performance to the ordinary consumer. Putting the D-Type super fast engineering into the E-Type's elegant new form. There was just one problem. The long shape of the E-Type was too difficult for ordinary drivers to handle at high speeds. So they invented a new system that allowed the rear wheels to move independently of each other and improve handling. Independent rear suspension, as it was known, became the new norm inside performance cars the world over. Eat your heart out, Mercedes, BMW and Ferrari. Bernie and Mario are trying to restore a classic E-Type Jaguar in record time. Bernie went over budget when he bought it. Hey, 12 grand. I had to pay. Mario couldn't have gone down anymore. Now they're trying to make it up by finding parts at bargain prices. You got a rear end for a Jag? Not right. You haven't got any parts for Jaguar E-Type, have you? E-Type, no. Unfortunately not. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? I've come all the way around right here. The best spares place. Only. The best spares place the whole of East of London. And you haven't got E-Type parts for me. Bernie's got one last place he thinks might have parts. Bernie. Yeah? What hell hole did you take me to? What do you mean hell hole, man? This is the East End. This is class. Ah, it's my friend. Hey! Bernie. 
Hey, how you doing? <laughs> so, Mike, am I Mario? Hi there, geezer. Hi. We're doing up a jag. You got any used parts for an old E-type? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I can have a look and see what we've got. All the old E-type stuff you just shoved on there? Yeah. Do you mind if I have a look for it? Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what we could use. I could use part of this exhaust for the exhaust system. It's the right diameter. Whoop. Easy, geezer. Watch your crown, Jules. That's definitely about the right length. Let's put that yeah. down. Get those rotors there. They look like Jag rotors. Which ones? The one right in front of your face. Oh. Ah, there you go. These are the shockers. Yeah. You've got to pull it out uh -huh. and push it in again and see if it still feels hard. Wow, it's like you, eh? It still works. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll give you a handful for it. All right. A handful? Cool. You've got a job. Yours. Lovely. Respect. Thank you very much. They've got some parts, but now Bernie wants to make some introductions. Bernie takes me around and starts introducing me to all these people, and they all know Bernie, like he's the godfather just arrived. Hello, team. <laughs> hey there. <laughs> it's a very good friend of mine, Mario. It's my associate, isn't it? You are. How are you? I realized this whole day was about introducing me to all Bernie's contacts and friends. It was like in making it OK for me to be around, because I'll be doing business here. Really, it was like the blessing of the Pope. It's day seven. And back at the garage, the mechanics are ready for one of the biggest challenges in any restoration, the engine. The E-Type's engine, the six-cylinder XK6, earned its stripes in motorsport. But in high-performance race cars, it was unpredictable and needed constant attention. Jaguar engineers spent five years adapting and reconfiguring it until finally they had created one of the most dependable high-performance engines ever made. It would last for 200,000 miles and do zero to 60 in seven seconds. And at the time of its launch, you could test the E-Type's top speed of 150 miles per hour and not worry about being pulled over. British motorways had no speed limit. It's been a long time since Mario and Bernie's car tested any limits. When they bought it, the engine was misfiring. And despite the fact he's never worked on an E-type motor, Mario decides to wheel the wrench. This thing's going to be a pain in the butt. I'm telling you. My baby. Here's my baby. Hi, Mario. How you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. All nice and stripped down. So be ready for the this body shop. It's going to be a hard baby. work on this. A lot of work. How's it going? A lot of work on this car. It looks fantastic. I mean, even like this, it looks look, fantastic. I just finished unseizing these carburetors on this thing. But look at this car. It's Beautiful. Oh. This is like a penis on four wheels. It's fantastic. I told Wayne to start the car up because Bernie's at the back and he's looking at the ass and like, like he's looking at this beautiful girl walking down the street. <laughs> Come on, Wayne, let's see it. Give me some. What the hell? Rev it up, rev it up. Mario, what the hell you Shut done? Up. It weren't like this before. Look at this. Well, the first thing I thought when he started that engine up, oh my god. God, the pistons or the engine is blown. We should have checked it out before we bought it. I checked it out, Mario. All it had was a misfire. Bernie, you checked it out with the wrong eyes, OK? What do you mean with the wrong eyes? Problem with 52 this years I've been doing this job. I don't want to hear that story again. You know, this thing is a lump. Now, we paid too much money for this car. It's bad news. It's not good news. And I, I don't have an answer for it. What have you done to it? That's oh, what I want to know. Just it don't go do away. That itself. It looks like the engine's gone. That can cost us like five grand to get that done. Go, Forget go. it, Mario. Wayne, you don't get know out what the, the hell you're doing. If the engine's gone, it could blow their budget completely, and the whole project will hang in the balance. This is a big problem. Now it's Bernie's turn to try his hand. Surely, he can't do any worse. He's worried that a piston's blown, and that could be expensive. I think we've possibly got an engine blown, and I don't even want to think about that with a cost. But after two days of poking and prodding, he discovers it's the carburetors that are the problem. 
One of the unsung heroes of old classic engines, carbs regulate the mix of air and fuel, and hence, the power. The more the valve at the bottom of the carburetor opens, the more fuel is ignited and the faster the car can go. In E-types, the valve needs to be lubricated to do its job properly. But when Bernie takes apart the carbs on their car, he discovers they're filthy. There's your problem. It's caked up with oil inside. And what he's done is overfilled the carburetors. He's put too much oil in there. The oil's hopping into the engine, and that's what's blowing out the back. So really, instead of a major overhaul, which I thought it might be, we've got a nice quick fix. Mario breaks it, Bernie fixes it. It's a partnership made in heaven. He may have used extra virgin olive oil or something inside the engine. Now that Bernie's averted a carburetor cataclysm, the mechanics can get to work on the rest of the engine. They clean out the cylinders, repair a worn piston, replace all the sparks, and test the wiring and renew it. More than halfway through their four-week schedule, they're finally ready to move on to the most time-consuming and tricky part of an E-type restoration, the bodywork. The E-type's long, sweeping curves are much more than just beautiful. They changed the way all cars were built, yes, even yours. The E-Type's creator, Malcolm Sayer, had specialized in aircraft design, and he was the first to use wind tunnels to test cars. And he did it with the E-Type. He took three years to create the most aerodynamic car ever built. But back at the garage, all those pioneering contours are a royal pain to restore. They've only 12 days left, and they've got to get moving on the bodywork. After almost five decades, the old paint has reacted with the oxygen and water vapor in the air and is discolored, cracked, and flaking. If they paint over the top, they'll never get the perfect factory fresh look they want. So they start by grinding off the paint. Inevitably, this scuffs the metal surface and reveals indentations. They use a hammer to beat any obvious bumps out of the panels, just as they did on the original production line. In the early 60s, I had the pleasure of going to Jaguar factory, see the E-Touch being built. There's these craftsmen who sit there on little stools with a solid piece of steel and a panel beater's hammer, and just their eyesight, and they sit there banging this thing until it was in shape, and that way they got an absolute perfect curvature. Incredible. I mean, these were real, real craftsmen. Then they apply layers of filler. Once this is sanded down, it creates a uniform surface. It's a process that needs to be repeated again and again for five days. If you don't, it doesn't matter how good the paint is, it's going to look terrible. Only then is it ready for the spray room an airtight booth where the air is filtered to keep out dust. After the primer, four layers of color will be applied, each of them baked dry in the booth at 160 degrees Fahrenheit while Craig paints. Mario and Bernie hit the road. They're testing out a fully restored E-type. A lot of power, step on it there. Let's go, give it a go, give it a go, let's go. Yeah, baby, boot it. Get this old girl going. Yeah. Oh, step on, boot it. Yeah, That's baby. more like it. Yeah. Boot it, boot it. Yeah. But they're not just having fun. They have a big decision to make. This E-Type has the original British specification. But the one they bought is a later model for the American market. To meet stringent US emission standards, Jaguar fitted different carburetors. Unfortunately, this also reduces the power of the engine. If the guys put in better carbs and retune the engine, they could add value and power. We get our car going like this, it'll be great. Our Maybe car, our car will go it. like this, wait and see. I will tune the life out of it, Mario, it will go like this. 
Yeah, baby, step on it, step on it. <laughs> now the fun's over, so it's back to the garage where Craig's finishing the spray paint. The result of his efforts is a startling new look. Craig's chosen Signal Red, one of the original Jaguar colors. But what will Mario and Bernie think? <laughs> now that's what I call a color. Craig done a most fantastic job of that car. That's as smooth as the top of my head, son. Give me your hand, mate. You've made a fabulous, fabulous job. The colour, everything's right on I'm this. I'm really impressed. How long have you been working on this? All night. You've been here the whole night? All night. You I'm must out. be absolutely dead tired. You wouldn't believe. But you've done the most unbelievable job of this. Craig really puts big effort into it because every car that he does, it's like a little piece of art to him. It's accomplishment to him. He did a great job. Come on in, Mario. Take it out, my son. Once the final coat's on, the car's got to be taken out Come into on, the fresh boy. air so the paint can harden. Back up slowly. Oh, what? what the hell? Hold it! Stop! What the Oh, my God, look at it! Oh, for sake! What? What? Look, what? come here. Look what you've done. Oh, Relax, like it's not that. Wow. What do you mean not that bad? The car was perfect. Where the f do you learn to drive, man? Oh, be quiet. What do you mean be quiet? Look at it. Oh, so you're telling man. me I stayed here all night for that. Well, I'm going home. You can poke it. Nah. Now, now see what you've done. You were directing me from us. Oh, when I walked away, I said, you go back straight. Why is this stupid thing here anyways? We don't even don't need it. It's don't blame me Don't blame what? the engine. Look, I didn't do this on purpose. To say oh, this is a setback is an understatement. We got to fix it. Dude, what else can we do? We got to fix it. Idiot. All this will do this. I've never seen him do anything. You f***ed up the carburetors on it, and you f***ed up the bodywork. And now we're out of time. To actually see a car that's all shiny and red and gleaming, crash into something. It was just heartbreaking, really heartbreaking. The accidents happen, but oh, just not on this car. It takes Craig two full days to repair the damage. They're going to have to make up for lost time. There are big mechanical jobs still to do. Next day, they pick up the pace. With the wheels out and the car on the hoist, they can get at the ball joints. Come on, George, we've got to get a move on, you know what I mean? Okay. Like, it'll be nice by like this time next summer. We're going to try and get the shock absorbers out. Time for Bernie's favorite precision tool, a big hammer. Hit it, my son, hit it. You had your cornflakes this morning? No. <laughs> no, exactly. That's the reason why. That's the problem. Come on, George. Hey! Told you, muscles! Now they can fit new shocks and springs. Do I have to come and give you a hand? Oh, about time you got your hands dirty. Sure. I get it stuck in my nails, man. I can't do it. <laughs> Go and do some oh. bloody work. Go on. Work on the mechanicals takes another two days. And the car's not finished yet. The original E-Type was famous for its gorgeous interior. This one's far from that. Every bit of leather and vinyl has been ripped out and needs to be replaced. Each piece of the interior lining must be cut to shape by hand and precisely fitted. After the mechanics have left, it falls to Mario and Bernie to finish off the job. That's good. Just get that lined up. No, no, no. no. I think that Hang on. there's a hole here for the, the clip here. Just clip it in. That's it. That's... What'd you call a fish with no eye? Squeezy. Fzz. 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 No eye. Letter I. Oh. All the seats were reupholstered, and putting them back in is harder than you'd think. 
Sometimes when you completely retrim an interior of a car, they can use actually too much padding inside, it makes them larger. Well, the space the way it fits in is very, very small. To refit them is an absolute nightmare. Watch the trim. Look, Mario, look here. You've got about a quarter of an Okay, inch then there. get your fat arse over here and let's push it together. My fat arse, I tell you something. <sighs> you all right there or you want a crane? No, no. I'll tell you something. Uh-huh. Carl, and half leaning down your side. Oh, we can line this up together for both. Hang on, bash it. Bash it one side. Just push it a little bit more. Oh man, this feels like when I was 18. <laughs> I'll tell you something, we've got a couple of 18 year olds, we wouldn't even know what to do with them. Uh, I agree. Speak for yourself. <laughs> It'd be nice to drive this car like this, eh? Oi, are we just good friends or yeah. what? <laughs> As the E-Type begins to take shape, it's easy to wonder why Jaguar ever stopped making such a beautiful car. In the 1970s, the advanced technology of the E-Type had been copied or trumped by its rivals. In 1974, the last one rolled off the production line. But what if it hadn't been so? What if the E-Type could be updated with the latest cutting-edge design and engineering? Amazingly, it has been. This is Henry Perriman. He and his team build E-types from scratch to ultra-modern standards. And all you need, if you want one, is a spare few hundred thousand dollars. The original E-type's fantastic, so you've got a great basis, but there's a few areas that we can improve. We'll take away the issues that are genuine problems of the time, so we've resolved the overheating, we'll give you brakes that will give you complete confidence, and we just dial out the weak points on the electrics and things like this. This is basically the ultimate evolution of the E-Type today, air conditioning, speed-sensitive power steering, 4.7-litre engine, the same power-to-weight ratio as a modern 911 turbo and actually it drives even better than it looks. The people in Henry's team spend months building their cars. Mario and Bernie, though, gave themselves only 28 days. And it's now day 27. They're rushing to get things done. Chop, chop, let's go, guys. Come on, I told you. The last guy will be here in about a half an hour. Wheels needed still to be put on. The headlights weren't even in the car. I had the guys working their asses off. The old rubber was cracked and needs to be replaced. OK, where are we again? Door rubber's next. We got any glue left to trim this up? The lights are fitted with new electrics. And the eye-catching chrome wheels have been refurbished. But not too tight. Perfect. Perfect. It's in, it's in, in the groove. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's in, but I didn't know if there was something I could go around. What are you guys, to... having a Lord meeting there? Let's get it done, man. What's the conversation? You've got to tell I'll him. Teach him. He's older than you. He's done it a 100 times. But as time runs out, the pressure gets to Bernie. It was working away, and then he just started losing it. And he doesn't handle stress. He gets wound up. Why don't you get your hands dirty and work yourself? My hands have been dirty since 8 o'clock this morning. Craig, when's the last time you've done any bloody work? The last time you done it. Oh, lovely. That's not, that's funny, Jake. Yeah, really comical. It's all organized. Everybody's working. Yeah, well, hang on. Where's the glass? The glass ain't in. Glass. The trim still ain't in. The door cards ain't in. Bernie, the glass guy's not here yet. Leave him alone. Keep working. Keep working, guys. It's a bloody joke, ain't it, eh? Calm yourself down. George, let's go. I'm not going to calm down, man. Don't turn your back on me. That's bloody rude. Listen, I'm really going to lose my temper. Tell him, say, you want to lose it? Bring it on, sunshine. Listen, old man, Bring go away. Don't you worry about old man. Here. Wine, 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 wine. Sound like one of my ex-wives. It ain't being done right. This ain't being hey, done. Hey, Craig. Enough. Tomorrow, the appraiser arrives to tell them if they've made money or lost it. What the hell is going on here? Perry, get lost. Go and have a coffee. Yeah. Get lost. I pay your wages, oh, don't you forget it. Just get on with your bloody work. Yeah, don't interfere in the bush. Get the f out. Get back to Mario, work. I'll tell you something. You and me are going to fall out big time. Right. Either get on with it or get out yourself. All right, get out. Get the f out! Mario, f you. If they don't stop arguing, they'll never make the deadline. 
Are you still here? I'm not leaving. I'm watching. So far, Mario Passioni and Bernie Feynman's new business venture hasn't been an easy ride. Bernie bought an E-Type with what seemed like a dodgy engine. What the hell is this? And Mario's expert driving skills nearly ruined a beautiful friendship. Look at it. Where the f do you learn to drive, man? I'll tell you something, you and me are going to fall out big time. People would look and think we're going to kill each other. We're not going to kill each other. Now, with just hours to go before the appraiser arrives, the guys are rushing to do the finishing touches. It's a tense time. Adding the famous Jaguar chrome work is a painstaking job. A mistake here could ruin the paintwork. Nice. Very nice. But the job's almost done when the iconic walnut steering wheel gets fitted. When we get it on, it's going to look beautiful. It's going to make the car look like a million bucks. Look at that. Is, is that the right way around? That's the right way around. You sure? 100%. Just four weeks ago, this Jaguar was a wreck sitting in a suburban garage. Now she looks like this. Stunningly restored, it looks almost like new. Both inside and out. But it wasn't easy. They brought the engine back to its meaty six-cylinder power. The whole body's been taken back to bare metal and resprayed. They decided to save money by not filling in the sunroof and just replace it instead. And they fitted a completely new interior. All this cost them just over $10,000, a little more than they had planned. Bernie and Mario managed to scrounge parts for just $2,800. Total cost of restoration, $12,800. The original cost of the car was around $18,000, so to break even, they need a value of $30,800, or 20,000 pounds. The man who's going to make that judgment is independent car appraiser Dylan Miles. His opinion really counts in the trade, and people rely on him. If he gives a value on a car, that's it, finished. That's in print. In the last year alone, he sold over $20 million worth of classic vehicles. His clients include rock stars, sheiks, and billionaires. He's a hard man to impress. His professional assessment of the car's value will decide if Mario and Bernie's partnership is a success or not. So, Californian car, right? Yes, it is. Right. Was it originally red? No, it was white. It had a full bare metal respray. What sort of state was the body? It was very, very good. It had one small hole which we plated and welded. OK. I would have preferred it to have been an earlier car, and the fact it has an automatic gearbox is probably not my favourite. Yeah. I'd like to have a look under the bonnet, if I may. Yeah, of course you can. Pleasure. Do you want to rev it a couple of times for me? When they bought the car, the engine was a problem. Now it's firing on all cylinders. But with their limited budget, they decided not to fill in the sunroof. Guys, I have to say, I really don't like this sunroof. Well, it came with a sunroof and it was very big tatty. I wasn't prepared to weld metal in it, so we've had a better sunroof put in. Right. That's a non-original fitment. I would have personally filled the roof in and not fitted another sunroof to it. Still looks great. That decision may have ended up costing them money. Once the forensic inspection is complete, Dylan gives his professional opinion on what the E-Type is worth. Right. Um, I think that about concludes our business. Nice to meet you, Bernie. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you, man. Good to meet you, Bernie. Thank you. Thank you. What do we got? What do we got there, Gun? 30K. Okay. Wow, that's fantastic. Uh, we've made... We've made 10,000. Not bad for four weeks' work. I looked at Mario and he was happy. I lost the bet. 
Well, he did say we're gonna double. But that's okay. It's great. It's great money. I'm so happy. I'm gonna let you buy me lunch. Let's go have lunch. Me buy you. I mean, yeah. you need lunch. Do you have a couple of good Christmases, fat Let's boy? Let's go, Slim Jim. Hop in the car. We still made a profit. That's the important thing. We didn't lose money. This car came out beautiful. So you like it? Yeah. With all the chrome and everything on it, it looks beautiful. But what we're going to do for the next one is even better than this one. Well, we could do a Beetle or we could do an Alfa Romero. Or... I'd like to do a Ford Zodiac. Uh-huh. I'll tell you something, you had one of those. Believe me, you had the class.